SolidWorks 2017 introduces flexible and powerful new workflows when working with third-party design data with 3D Interconnect. It also allows you to leverage any legacy design data created in a variety of CAD formats. 3D Interconnect is much more than 3D translation. In fact, it virtually bypasses the entire translation process and allows you to work with CAD data from a variety of different design tools as though they were native SolidWorks files. It's also intelligent and understands when third-party CAD data is changed within its native design environment. By honouring face and edge IDs, changes to these files are like other changes you would make in SOLIDWORKS. So on the screen you'll see the file formats currently supported by 3D Interconnect. These include PTC Creo, Autodesk Inventor, Siemens Solid Edge and NX, as well as Katir V5 for SOLIDWORKS Premium customers. In the following demonstration, we're going to look at three different workflows to show just how flexible working with 3D party CAD data is with 3D Interconnect. The first workflow focuses on directly using 3D files in SOLIDWORKS, like any other SOLIDWORKS file, and is probably the most common method of leveraging 3D Interconnect. So we'll switch over to SOLIDWORKS and take a look. So I have the MyOMO control module here and uh, our colleagues have used Inventor to design the battery pack that we need to include in our assembly to ensure fit, form and function. So firstly I'm just going to switch over to a display state and take a look at where the battery needs to go. So we're going to be inserting our Inventor based or Inventor modelled battery pack into this area here. So if I go up to the insert components menu one of the things that you'll notice is in addition to SOLIDWORKS files and the quick icons, we can also select any of the formats we listed previously. So I mentioned that we're going to be using an inventor assembly, so I'm going to select to insert an inventor assembly. And I'm going to select that from the open dialog box here. SOLIDWORKS will read the data and allow us to use that in our assembly. So we'll just take a look at a couple of the displays uh, in the feature tree just to indicate what's been going on. So firstly, you'll see from the name of the assembly, it is actually referencing the inventor assembly directly. And you can see this by the extension listed on the file. If we scroll down a little bit further and expand that assembly, you'll see all the individual components uh, from inventor are listed in here and they carry some uh, different symbols that you won't be familiar with. So it's a part symbol with a little arrow uh, and another symbol towards the bottom indicating that it's referencing a file stored elsewhere. So let's take a look at how we can utilize that file in our assembly. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make that into position. So I'm going to use a plane from the assembly and a plane in our SOLIDWORKS assembly to position that in. We'll just make this face transparent as well so we can see what's going on. We'll grab hold of the back face and mate it here. And then just moving on from there, I'm just going to use this underside face and a mate to indicate that the two are located together here, tangentially. And that's our component positioned. Now we have a sliding uh, grip here for the battery that I'd like to position as well. So we'll just grab hold of the transparent face and the inside face of that and we'll make those two together. Now what you'll notice when I create that mate is that the holes uh, to hold that retaining plate in move to satisfy the new position. That's because they're created in context. So we've built up some references to in context components here, which ideally we want to maintain should any changes to the design be made. So now that we've positioned our assembly, we're pretty happy and we can move on with any additional work that we could do. But let's say for argument's sake, our supplier calls us and tells us that he's changed the design of that battery pack and we want to reuse that new design. Now, unfortunately, I don't have Inventor installed on my machines, but I have some alternate versions files. So we're going to simulate uh, the change by copying uh, the files from the battery pack version two folder and copying them over where the original files were stored. So we'll replace all those files 
just to simulate that the data has been modified. Now if we go back into SOLIDWORKS and rebuild, what we'll see is that the uh, top level assembly for that battery pack carries another symbol towards the bottom, giving us an indication that that data has altered. So I can right click on this and update the model. It will reread that inventor assembly and bring the new modified variant into our SOLIDWORKS assembly. Now one of the things you'll notice here that the battery pack has got considerably larger. There's also uh, six batteries instead of eight, but all the make references that we've built up, including the one to the in-context component here with the hole positions, has updated to reflect that change. So a really nice improvement over what we would have had to do in previous versions of SOLIDWORKS. We'll take a look at another workflow now, which involves us opening a file directly. So I'm going to choose a ProE file and select this pulley here. So firstly, if we take a look at the feature tree, you'll see it's subtly different to uh, how it used to appear in previous releases of SOLIDWORKS in that it doesn't show an imported body feature in the tree, it shows the file name of the component that we've opened uh, and an external reference to that file. Underneath that, you'll see it will carry information about solid bodies and planes. Now, what I'd like to do here is just make some modifications to this component. So I'm gonna use some design library features that I already have stored away. So firstly, we'll drag and drop a keyway position that and then we've also got a slot feature that we'd like to position as well. So I've added some features to the part that I've opened up. So I want to use that in my assembly now so we'll go and we'll insert. So we'll just use a couple of mates to position this and we can see whether or not this fits our purpose. So we can see that the pulley is actually slight, uh, slightly out of line with the hard stop here. So uh, we need to communicate some changes to our supplier. So let's, uh, let's work on the proviso they've made those changes in Pro Engineer or Creo. Uh, and we want to implement those changes in SOLIDWORKS. Now if we take a look at the Creo file here, you'll see it's suffixed with a dot one. So Creo uses a versioning system. So if our supplier makes a change in Creo, they would be creating a version two file. So if we go into the alternate versions here, we've got that version two file. I'm just gonna copy it back and paste it into the location where the original Creo file was inserted from. So you'll see I haven't overwritten that file. I've now got a new version of it in there. If we go back into SOLIDWORKS and just open that component again in its own window, you'll see there's a rebuild symbol against this indicating that 3D Interconnect has spotted that a new variant of that file is in there. So again, using a right click and updating the model, we can update the file to reflect the changes that have been made in the native CAD system. Going back to the assembly, we can see that the fit is much better, but also the keyway feature and the slot feature have been maintained in the component as well. So because they were referenced to edges and we're maintaining the uh, reference edges and face IDs, those modifications have still come through. So a really nice way to work with data there as well. So the final workflow we'll take a look at is perhaps downloading files from the internet. So we don't have access to the native CAD tool uh, to make any changes to them. So just for completeness, we're going to use a solid edge assembly here and we'll bring that into our assembly. We'll drop that into position and we'll just do a little bit of mating to, uh, to get that into the relative position that we want it to be. Okay, so now we've positioned this, we can take a look at the fit and see if it suits our purposes. And I can see there's a mismatched hole alignment here. 
Uh, so there's something that we need to rectify. So without access to the native CAD tools, this type of thing can be quite difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to use another option within 3D Interconnect to break the link to that component. So this will revert back to the more typical uh, importing of components into SOLIDWORKS. So you'll see internally it creates a copy of that assembly. So I'm gonna open that assembly up in its own window and I only need to modify this component here. So I'm gonna do the same operation on this. I'm gonna break the link to that component. So the other two components still display using the 3D interconnect style, so they're referencing the, uh, the native solid edge files, but this particular component now is uh, an imported file that I can modify. So I'm just gonna open that file in its own window, and we'll just do a quick uh, recognize on that hole, just to give us a position and some geometry to modify. So moving back up the levels to the assembly here, what I should be able to do is edit this part and then edit this particular feature. And we'll just reposition that hole to where we want it to be relative to uh, the assembly. So very quickly we've modified that imported data made some changes to it and made it suit our purpose. So another good example of a workflow that you can use in 3D Interconnect. So in terms of summary on the support uh, for the file types that we can use, we support Pro-E version 16 all the way to Creo 3, and that's both part and assemblies. Solid Edge version 18 to ST8, Unigraphics to NX10, Inventor version 6 to 2016, and for SOLIDWORKS Premium customers, Katir V5 Release 8 all the way through to V5 2016. Again, more for summary, uh, just to look at the benefits of this system over typical importing of data. There's no translation necessary, so it should be a lot faster. Face and edge IDs are preserved, so when you're replacing the data with modified variants, you, you saw that the mates and any references update. It should give us much faster performance. There are mul multiple workflow options. We saw the direct insertion, uh, the opening as a base or a derived part, and the ability to break the link between other files. So hopefully this new functionality should give us a, a lot more flexibility for legacy data, and also if you're looking to migrate CAD systems as well.